and a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Israelites, it's very important to analyze everything taught to you by religious leaders. The more we review end time prophecy and seek the most high for ourselves, the truth is removing the scales religious doctrines put over our eyes. Religion is the witchcraft or spell that was done against the people to blind the minds of everyone seeking the face of the true creator. If you didn't know religion was witchcraft and idolatry, now you know. The rituals done during Sunday service is to reestablish the evil covenants the people made with the idols hiding behind the evil altar. The sorcery is being done right in front of the people and they cannot see. The reason the people can't see what's being done to them, the God of this world have blind the minds of all who are being held hostage in religion. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We need to look further into the verse you just heard in the book of Second Corinthians. Whenever anyone quote this verse, they usually quote the verse to prove Jesus is the image of God. The verse starts with, The God of this world have blind the minds of the people who believe not. The verse went on to say, Because of their unbelief, the gospel cannot shine unto them. This verse unveil a lot of truth, especially with what's going on in this generation. The gospel of the kingdom is being heard and some people are sticking to what they know while a minority few is giving the truth a chance. When the kingdom of darkness blind your mind with their falsehoods, only the most high can open your spirit to receive the truth. The verse reveal Satan is the God of this world. Not only is Satan the God of this world, he prevent the people who refuse to believe the truth from seeing the light or the good news the Messiah brought into this dark world. Israelites, it's very important for you to know that Satanel is the God of this present world we live in. Remember I said to you, everyone who is subject to Satan live on this earth. Yet if thou hadst submitted and had been obedient to me, and have kept my word that wouldest be with my angels in my garden. But when thou didst transgress and hearken to Satan, thou didst become his guest among his angels that are full of wickedness. And thou camest to this earth that bring forth to thee thorns and thistles. Satan is the God of this world. The book of Enoch revealed there are endless realms. Satan is not the God of the other realms. Because Satan became darkness, he was sent to this earth until the judgment against him are fulfilled. Everyone who believes Satan or take his offers, they are sent here to dwell among Satan and his wicked angels. Until the days the Most High ordained for the seed of Adam to live on this earth are complete, the seed of Adam must endure. The way the Satans was able to deceive many is through religion. The spiritual wickedness in high places don't attack your flesh. Israelites, you need to understand that your enemies don't fight you in the flesh. They attack your spirit through sorcery. It's about time you understand religion is a witchcraft attack. When the people attend the various religious rituals disguised as Sunday service, they are being sacrificed to the idol gods, the high-level workers of iniquity serve in the various religious faith in this world. 
the scriptures let us know that the workers of iniquity make their offerings and sacrifices to their idol gods and not to the most high. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Too many people are deceived into believing the God of Israel is the God being worshipped and served in the religion called Christianity. The time have come for the remnant to know that you never worship the God of Israel in religion. If you're in religion, you don't serve the God of Israel. You serve and worship the imitation. The God presented to us as the God of Israel in religion is not the God of Israel, nor is the graven image circulating in the beast system the accurate depiction of the deliverer. The Most High said he won't share his glory with no graven images. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. For multiple generations, an abominable image of an idol that imitates the Most High in the Word of God have taken the glory of the Father in the beast system. The graven image is worshipped more than the Father. Israelites and Gentiles, I hope you can begin to see the unraveling of religious falsehoods before your eyes. As we review end-time prophecy, many doctrines taught for multiple generations in religion have been proven to be false with the very scriptures the workers of iniquity used to establish their doctrines. When the remnant allow the Holy Spirit to guide them into all truth, they will see the truth expose the lies told for centuries in religion. History also exposes the lies told in religion when history is taught in truth. In order to see the power of the Most High in the present awakening, you have to let the Most High open your heart as well as transform you by renewing your mind. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing of your mind is important if you want to understand prophecy as well as the world we live in. The carnal mind that have been trained by the spiritual wickedness in high places to accept a lie as truth cannot comprehend what is happening in this world today. As long as the workers of iniquity have control over your spirit from the spiritual attacks that is done against you through religion, the Satans will control your every move. There's countless individuals bound spiritually and they don't even know it. A lot of Israelites are compromised in the mind. Religious doctrines are the culprit to spiritual bondage. Unclean spirits live among us freely because most people believe they don't exist. As long as the people believe unclean spirits are fairy tales, they will dwell among us undetected. Because religious leaders fail to teach the truth, along with the people's refusal to seek the most high for themselves, many people perish from a lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. A lot of people are being destroyed for what they don't know. The people whom the God of this world have blind their mind will reject everything their carnal mind can understand. Most people are unaware they're under witchcraft attacks. For example, all signs point to the other species of mankind doing sorcery against the indigenous black people. Because a great majority of indigenous black people's eyes are closed, they can't discern the attacks. The Most High will find a way to communicate these attacks to you. The most common way the Most High communicate with you is through the spirit realm. The scripture said the Most High will speak to us in a dream or a vision. For God speaketh once, yea, twice. Yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. The Most High will reveal everything that is happening to you in the world in the spirit realm. A dream symbol that indicate you don't have control over your life, or you're being controlled, you're in your car or any motor vehicle and someone else is driving. 
In the spirit realm, vehicles at times symbolizes your destiny. If someone else is driving, then the person driving have control over your life. The only way to be delivered from witchcraft attacks is through deliverance. The scripture said, submit to the most high, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. In addition, the word of God said, some devils only come out through prayer and fasting. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Deliverance is the only way you can be set free from sorcery done against you. The indigenous black people need to understand a great amount of sorcery was done against them to keep them docile, as well as to keep you from uniting. Your enemies are successful in controlling your life because of religion. Religion give them access to establish evil covenants that give them permission to interfere with your life. If you're familiar with the Spirit Realm series on this channel, you will know that the heathens have evil altars built to their idol gods all over the world. Some of these altars are right in our faces and many of you can't discern. Most of you are programmed to see the evil altars as religious art. Religion is nothing but witchcraft and idolatry. Israelites and Gentiles, the time have come for you to believe this truth about religion and come out of her. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Witchcraft and idolatry goes hand in hand. You can't participate in idolatry without witchcraft. When you bow down to worship their idols and you pray at their evil altars, you're participating in witchcraft and idolatry. Bowing down to worship the heathen's gods is idolatry. When you pray on evil altars and accept the offers from the idols, as well as establish covenants with idols, that's witchcraft and sorcery. You give the idol access to your life. Adam and Eve is a very good example of what listening and accepting the offers from Satan does to you. They became subject to Satan. Satan now said to Adam, because you disobeyed your God and obeyed me, I am king over you. It didn't take much for Satan to ruin Adam and Eve's life. But now, O Adam, by reason of thy fall, thou art under my rule and I am king over thee. Because thou hast hearkened to me and hast transgressed against thy God, neither would there be any deliverance from my hands until the day promised thee by thy God. When Adam and Eve listened to Satan, they gave him power over them. Also, they established a covenant with Satan that gave Satan access to them. Israelites, this is why we're in this world instead of the garden. Some of you believe because you never prayed to a statue, you never been to what you believe to be an evil altar, you never participated in witchcraft and idolatry. If you ever step foot into a church and pray to the God, the pastor in that church believe in, in addition, you participated in the altar calls, you're guilty. Just because the altar doesn't appear evil, it doesn't mean it's not an evil altar. I hope you cannot comprehend how so many people perish from a lack of knowledge. A lot of you come into the awakening with a compromised mind that is controlled by the high level workers of iniquity. That's why it's difficult for you to understand the truth the Most High is making known. Because many are deceived with religious falsehoods, they attack the people the Most High appoints to tell them the truth. Until you renew your mind, repent of your sins, and seek deliverance, you will never understand the mysteries. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Israelites and Gentiles, the time have come for you to treat religious falsehoods as a witchcraft attack. You must seek deliverance to be free from all forms of religious bondage. Israelites, Attacks against your spirit through sorcery are serious matters that you shouldn't take lightly. Your spirit is the real you. Anything that happens to your spirit will affect you in the physical realm. Your enemies attack you in the spirit through sorcery. Because many people are unaware, they perish. The renewing of your mind will set you free from spiritual attacks. 
The gospel of the kingdom that is being heard right now is one way the Most High is delivering his people from religious strongholds. Remember, the truth makes us free. In addition, the Most High can sanctify us with truth. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Today, we're reviewing end-time prophecy about the marriage of the Lamb the union that would take place after the Most High have made everything new. This great union that would take place after the great white throne judgment is symbolized as a marriage celebration. Before we get into the marriage of the Lamb, we must identify the bride and the groom in this great marriage union. For multiple years, I have heard and was taught in the religion called Christianity that the church is the Lamb's bride. For multiple years, I have heard countless pastors and teachers refer to the church as the bride of the Lamb. By now, you all should know everything taught to us by the workers of iniquity and religion are false. The doctrine of the church being the bride of the Lamb is a false doctrine like all the other doctrines of devils coming out of the pulpits of workers of iniquity in religion. The scripture in the book of Revelation said, New Jerusalem was the bride of the Lamb. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. I believe the workers of iniquity made the church the bride to make religion appear to be the path that leads to salvation instead of destruction. Satan has to compete with the promises the Most High made to the righteous. In order for him to do this, Satan had to make his offers appear to be better than what's written to get the people to accept his offers. As long as Satan established a covenant, he has access. It doesn't matter to Satan how he established the covenants. As long as the covenants are established, Satan have access to ruin your life just like he did to Adam and Eve when they believed him. Not only does the scripture in the book of Revelation refer to New Jerusalem as the bride of the Lamb, the scriptures in the book of Revelation went on to say New Jerusalem was the Lamb's wife. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. The reason New Jerusalem is the Lamb's wife or bride, the Messiah said he went to prepare a place for us. Before a marriage ceremony, a bride adorned herself before meeting her husband. None of us have ever dwelled in the garden, nor have we seen the Garden of Eden. We only know what the scriptures tell us about New Jerusalem. Adam and Eve are the only people that dwell and live in the garden. As their descendants, we have never seen the bride of the Lamb. We can only imagine what the bride looks like with the descriptions given to us. We will lay our eyes on the bride of the Lamb for the very first time when it comes down from heaven at the marriage ceremony of the Lamb. During the days when the scriptures was written by the prophets who had the visions, the marriage traditions in those days are different from today. Most of the time, the bride didn't meet her husband until the day of the marriage ceremony. The scriptures give us a very good example of this. The marriage union between Isaac and Rebekah. It was Abraham that seek a wife for his son. The Most High used Abraham's servant to locate the wife the Most High have chosen for Isaac. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. When the servant found Rebekah, the servant didn't know if Rebekah was the one chosen. The servant had to pray and ask the Most High for guidance. The servant said the woman... He asked for water. If she give him water to drink, as well as his camel water to drink, that is the woman the most I have chosen for Isaac. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham, 
Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass, that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. Rebekah didn't know Abraham's servant. Rebekah gave him water, and she informed him who she was and her family. When the servant realized Rebekah was the woman chosen to be Isaac's wife, he identified himself in his mission when he reached her family's house. Although Rebekah was Abraham's relative, she decided to marry Isaac despite not ever seeing Isaac nor in a relationship with Isaac. It was their customs in those days to marry before even meeting the woman or man. A bride always adorned herself before the marriage union. This tradition continued to exist until today. When the Messiah said that he went to prepare a place, the Messiah went to adorn the place he prepared for the righteous to dwell in eternity. The scripture in the book of Revelation said, New Jerusalem came down from heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. Today, a bride would prepare and make herself beautiful to meet her husband at the marriage ceremony. New Jerusalem is being prepared and made beautiful to present to the righteous at the Lamb's marriage supper. Just as a bride would wear her best jewelry and most expensive garment, New Jerusalem is described in the scriptures to have streets made with gold and the most precious stones. New Jerusalem would be breathtaking, just like a bride is breathtaking on the day of her marriage. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysopasis. The eleventh, a jacinth, the twelfth, an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. New Jerusalem is the bride of the Lamb, not the church. The workers of iniquity twisting the scriptures to force their false doctrines. Since we've been reviewing end time prophecy, every doctrine the spiritual wickedness in high places taught have been proven to be false. There's not a single doctrine taught to us in religion that tells the truth about the prophecies as well as the words of the Most High. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to seek the face of the Most High for yourself to get the truth. Don't allow your oppressors to tell you about your God. Your oppressors don't know your God. There's a parable in the book of Matthew that talks about the virgins and the oil. The story is talking about the marriage of the lamb. The virgin who took their lamp and oil was given access to the marriage ceremony of the bridegroom. The virgin who didn't have oil for their lamp was left out of the ceremony. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. The bridegroom in the scripture is the Messiah. All of us whom the Most High will raise at the last day and given access to the marriage of the Lamb will stand with the Messiah when the bride, New Jerusalem, come down from heaven. The scriptures reveal New Jerusalem as the bride and the Messiah as the bridegroom. I'm not sure where did the disciples of Satan get the church as the bride of the Lamb. There's no scripture confirming the modern day church as the bride of the Lamb. We're not getting married to the Lamb. 
the scriptures clearly said that New Jerusalem was the bride of the Lamb. All of the righteous will be invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. After the Most High have made everything new. The marriage of the Lamb will be a glorious time for all creation. John said he heard a great voice of many people saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor, praising the Most High. The people was happy that the marriage of the Lamb has finally come. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. The scripture said, everyone who is called to the marriage of the Lamb are blessed. Israelites and Gentiles, we all should strive to be a part of the great celebration of the marriage of the Lamb. It will be a time of great joy. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Once the marriage ceremony of the Lamb is complete, the righteous will inherit the kingdom the Messiah went to prepare for them. New Jerusalem is the city that will be in the middle of the new earth. And New Jerusalem is where the throne of the Most High will be. Israelites, the truth that is being revealed at this time doesn't support the fairy tales told to us in religion. The spiritual wickedness in high places have taken the writings of our ancestors and altered the writings. The workers of iniquity imitate the Most High and gave the glory of the Most High to their idols. The workers of iniquity have rewritten history to support their narratives. Israelites, this is why it's important to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit that abide with us. You won't find the truth in the beast system, beast culture, and the beast religion. You could only find the truth from the Holy Spirit. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit will bring all things to our remembrance. Our generation have to unlearn the lies told to us in the beast system as well as in the beast religion. This is not the first time our people had to unlearn the falsehoods they've been indoctrinated with. Our family records have been burned by the Romans at least three times throughout history. Moreover, the unbelieving Jews had no register to guide them all right. Neither did they know how the lines of kindred ran at first, and as much as the law and the prophets were three times burnt out from them. The first time in the days of Enatach, who burned down the whole house of God. The second time they burnt those books in the days of Kablar, the great king of Mosul. And the third time they burnt the books was at the transportation by King Nebuchadnezzar when Abermadan came and burnt the house of God and destroyed the walls of Jerusalem. When Simeon the priest asked of him the store of books and he gave them to him. Many Israelites in various generations live without knowledge of their culture and traditions. That is how the workers of iniquity can easily mislead the indigenous black people. Also, with our oppressors ruling over us, it makes it easy for them to dilute the scriptures and to change history. Now we're living in a time when the Most High is revealing truth. The truth is exposing the lies told to us generation after generation. The remnant must take advantage of the opportunity given to us to know the truth about our God and heritage. We also need to know how to decode the signs of the times to know where we are in the timeline to our redemption. There's a lot of prophecy being fulfilled at this time. Only the truth can reveal it to us. The fairy tales told to us by religion is a stumbling block that will lead us to destruction. That is why I repeatedly say to you to allow the Most High to renew the spirit of your mind to receive the truth. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, Israelites, you don't want to be a part of the population of Israelites and Gentiles under the strong delusion. The truth exposed a lot of doctrines and lies told in the beast culture. 
Make sure to establish a personal relationship with the Most High so that you can make your petition known to Him when you need confirmation as well as to know what is coming your way. We have to stop seeking our God through religion. Remember, religion is witchcraft and idolatry. No sorcerers and idolaters will inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Israelites, the time have come for you to renew your mind. The marriage of the Lamb is the time period when the righteous, everyone whose name is written in the book of life, will gain access into the kingdom of the Most High. As you heard in the previous scripture, no idolater and sorcerer will be able to enter the kingdom. We all have come too far as the end time generation to allow the Satans to cause us to miss the kingdom. Give the truth a chance to transform your mind to bring forth the necessary changes needed to inherit the kingdom of the Most High. The bride, New Jerusalem, is getting ready for the marriage of the Lamb. Just as the Messiah is preparing a place for us, we should allow the Most High to prepare us for the glorious ceremony of the marriage of the Lamb. We want to be the fine linen, the scriptures in the book of Revelation call the righteousness of the saints at the marriage ceremony. And her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. The Most High have revealed a lot of truth as we review end time prophecy. Israelites, I recommend you to study end time prophecy in your private time as well. We all should know what to expect in the end times. We all should be on one accord. If we continue to follow religious doctrines about end time prophecy, the spirit of confusion will have its way with us. Allow the Holy Spirit to be your teacher so that we can unite as one because the times is of the essence. Israelites were closer than you know. The scripture said when we begin to see certain prophecies being fulfilled, we should look up for our redemption is close. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. As the prophecies are being fulfilled, know that the times will get hard for us. That is why we must prepare our mind and spirit for the times at hand. We must endure until the end. Being present in the marriage of the Lamb is worth our efforts. I pray that the Most High continue to reveal His truth to us as we seek His face. Let us submit ourselves to the Most High and lean not to our own understanding. Let the Most High direct our path to his kingdom. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel.